Hey guys, it's Troy here, and I wanted to share with you a pen that, quite honestly, I resisted for a long time buying, and there are some reasons behind it. If you follow my channel, you know that I like vintage pens, I like new pens. Um, Estabrook is a name that's been around a long, long time. Fantastic American brand, as far as I'm concerned, that had a very good, affordable pen during its heyday, and I really enjoy them because I use them to cut my teeth on learning how to repair pens, restore pens a little bit, and uh, quite honestly, I've purchased a lot of them over the years. Um, not as awesome as some collections that I've seen as some hard-to-find ones, but I, I enjoy them. And there are so many nibs that were available for them, and they were easily swappable. I loved the concept of them. Unfortunately, you know, Esther Brook went out of business, and the name was revived for a little while. Unfortunately, it wasn't revived by the, the most reputable of manufacturers. As a matter of fact, I read absolutely nothing good about the company that had resurrected the name Esther Brook, and they were manufactured... Uh, by some horrible Chinese manufacturer. I can tell you right now, I was very disappointed in the one that I had gotten, uh, the Charles Schultz um, commemorative pen. It wrote horribly. It took me a long time to work on this one, swapping out the nib, swapping out the feed, uh, and uh, finally got it to where it writes halfway decent with a new nib, new feed. And there were other people I've read online who had other horrible examples and experiences and articles that were written on how horrible it was. So when I heard that Kenro was purchasing the brand, I got excited about it and I was like, oh great, I hope they actually come out with, sort of like Parker just did with a 51, maybe they come out with um, a J. I mean, I'm talking not just um, not just a new modern version and just call it a J. I was hoping they'd really look at the idea of making those uh, those nice little swappable nibs like you get with the old Esther books. Maybe it would take nice old Renew Point nibs. No, it was not to happen. <sighs> okay, so I waited and I actually purchased uh, an Esther book uh, and I've done a video on that and I'll try to put a link to that as well. All right, wasn't real impressed with that one that I got and it wasn't like the Estabrook SD. SD was going to be their flagship pen. Not the Phaeton like I like I told you about. It was going to be the SD. So I looked at the looked at them. And I was like 150 bucks for a standard SD. Really, for an Estabrook. I was used to Estabrooks being a lot cheaper, being a lot more uh, affordable, a lot more value than the price tag. And if you wanted the oversize, it was going to be like 200 bucks. And they did offer an adapter for which you could actually put these nibs in for an extra $40. And I was thinking, you know, if you're going to have a brand like Esterbrook, you probably ought to include that little adapter uh, so that you can actually take advantage of the Esterbrook name and the Esterbrook uh, history, and the Esterbrook um, availability of really good swappable nibs. But that's not the, the way that they went. So I really resisted for a long time. So after seeing some reviews, chatting with people who I know personally who have owned them I thought about it and I thought about it and I finally broke down and I got one I got the Esterbrook SD this um, is simple yet elegant with the black the ebony and the gold okay the ebony color with gold to me black with gold trim to me has always been a very elegant combination simple yet elegant so that's what i went for they actually have some very nice colors and i looked at them for a long time i mean the lilac and the blueberry and they got like a honeycomb looking thing um so they had some very nice colors that i said maybe eh, maybe not you know i just i couldn't bring myself to to nibble at the 150 bucks or the 200 dollars price tag and with the 200 bucks you don't even get one of the adapters well I had a little bit of money left over, so 
I nibbled at the oversize and quite honestly I went ahead and I nibbled too because uh, they they do have available for an extra 30 or 40 depending upon from where you buy them the little section that will accommodate the renew point nib so I typically like the more broad nibs from uh, vintage Esther Brooks but you can see that they do go in they do screw in so now I can use my modern Esther Brook Esty with an old renew nib and quite honestly I've got a bunch of nibs here as a matter of fact with Esther Brooks I've got a bunch of them here at the house I've got a bunch of my personal collection got a bunch that I'm working on that I will eventually put up for sale and make available to you my viewers of nice Esther Brook vintage pens lever fillers but you know I'm here to talk about the brand new Esty when I say brand new they've been out for well over a year uh, and like I said I have just balked at the idea well, when I saw that uh, I, I could go ahead and get this because I had the money, add this on top of it because I had the money, and they threw in a leather pen sleeve customized with the Esterbrook name on it, I went ahead and got it. So, let me go ahead and show you a little bit about the packaging, and then we'll do a writing sample. I'll show you some more close-ups, and I'll give you some statistics. I cannot, however, compare it to the standard version. And the reason I cannot do that is because I don't have one. I have not used one. I've only touched and played with the oversize, which is why I went ahead and got the oversize, because I knew that I would like it, and I tend to like my personal taste, the oversize bigger pens. All right, so when you get an Esther Brook SD, it'll show up in a fairly plain cardboard sleeve outside of their normal box and you can see right here I've got the uh, the Esterbrook oversize the SD oversize and ebony with gold fountain pen and you just slide that out and you've got that red uh, fabric covered box Esterbrook established 1858 that's when the original company was founded obviously uh, not the modern incarnation but it does have a magnetic closure you open it up and here it tells you America's original reborn so um, this is what you got for an SD box and of course it has this little card in here division of Kenro and it sits, uh, the pen will come sitting on a nice little bed like this, held by an elastic band. You lift up the bed, and it does actually come with, um, and this actually did lift out here for me earlier, and it does come with a little cartridge. And of course, I chose not to use the uh, cartridge, and I went ahead and used the converter that does come with it. And that's the one thing I did like about it is if you're going to have a pen for $200 or $150, depending upon what model, it ought to come with a converter. And this one did. So here you get a nice gold tone clip, fairly serviceable, not too, uh, not nothing fancy. And I didn't want anything fancy. I wanted something, you know, elegant and something nice looking. So uh, you got that beautiful ebony. You do have a nice little taper down here in a, a typical cigar shaped pen. Uh, and you've got the same here, nothing fancy, just a nice little cigar shaped pen. Esterbrook uh, name right here on the cap. It is a twist to open. One of the things you're going to notice, though, when you go to put it back in, it does have a little spring inside it. Um, that's one of the things I did find about this that was very interesting at this price point, um, is that um, you do have in here, and I actually took a little video of it uh, to show you how it operates, uh, and just to push it in with a paper clip so you can see it. But there is a spring-loaded cap that sits inside, or an inner cap. Um, and ostensibly, that is to help keep the pen sealed. So you've got... Uh, you got the threads on the inside of that cap, uh, and then you've got here, um, on this one is the gold tone nib. Uh, and my understanding is these are like a number six Yovo manufactured nib that you're going to find uh, typically write very, very well, uh, especially if they're very well tuned. And you've got a black section coming down to a brass fitting here. Um, now, one of the things about this that I do like is you've got the brass metal here and on the inside of the barrel as well so you've got brass on brass for the fitting and of course you've got a converter that sits right in here I chose to ink this up I do believe with a platinum smoke black 
metal uh, body construction. And if you wanted to post it, you probably could, but I'll be honest with you, it kind of sits kind of awkwardly <laughs> on the back of this thing. Um, and I don't post it because it's a pretty good size pen, uh, at least with the oversize, and it sits very nicely in my hand. So, um, I do like the girth of it, and that's one of the reasons why I went ahead and purchased this particular pen, was because of the girth. And I got some better pictures, some better photos of these that I will show you here in just uh, as I go along with this video. So, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to show you how well this thing uh, goes together with the converter and the adapter that will fit uh, a vintage Esterbrook uh, Renew Point nib as well. All right, so here is the oversized SD. Let's uh, show you how that stacks up size-wise to some of the other pens. I showed you earlier one of the earlier incarnations or the attempt at a modern incarnation of Esterbrook. And uh, this was that Schultz pen. Let's show you how that stacks up size-wise against the modern Esterbrook SD. Uh, let's see, let's throw in a few other pens here that you might be familiar with. Uh, in about the same class, the Waterman Karen. When you're looking at in terms of price and construction materials, let's throw in a Lamy 2000. All right, uh, let's go low end. Throw in a Twisby Eco into the mix, so you can get an idea size-wise how that looks. And here the ubiquitous Pilot Metropolitan just for a size comparison. And then the ultimate comparison as far as I'm concerned, let's move in an Esterbrook J from the 1940s. Uh, so that gives you an idea of the size of the oversized SD compared to an Esterbrook J. So if you're familiar with the old Esterbrook J, at least you know what the oversize will be in comparison in terms of girth and length. All right, like I told you, it is a screw top. Let's go ahead and set this down. I am not going to post this particular pen. Um, and to be honest with you, I've never written with this on a Rhodia pad since I've gotten it. So this will be kind of a first for me. I have written on some other pen, uh, pads like a, a Claire Fontaine, but as far as a Rhodia dot pad, this will be my first outing with it. And I've done a lot of uh, regular old notepads uh, that I have that I use quite often, some of them very fountain pen friendly as well. So this. Brook, and this is the SD, this is the oversize, which I like. Um, this one has a medium nib. So this is their standard uh, medium nib, nothing special to it. This is how it writes right out of the box, and actually it is a very nice smooth nib. This is written first time every time I've gone to use it. Um, like I said, I resisted it, and I've heard a lot of people say, hey, it writes really, really well. So they were buying it. And even people who've had it for a while, they said, you know what, it's still actually a pretty good, uh, a good performing pen. So I went ahead and said, well, maybe I won't be disappointed, and it won't be you know, cheap garbage. Uh, let's see the, the quality, how it actually performs. Like I said, I'd seen them uh, just I'd never bitten until I went ahead and gotten this. So my understanding is this has a, a, a Yovo nib in it, uh, so I'm told. And uh, this one here, like I said, it is a metal, uh, yeah, of course it's a metal nib, duh. Uh, but this one is a steel nib. And I put into this some platinum, uh, some platinum smoke black and it is a nice fairly wet writer and it is a very smooth writer I rather like it 
So I'll tell you what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to um, replace that section and I'm going to fill it up with the converter and the adapter that will let me write with that nice broad uh, old vintage renew point nib. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and I inked this up. I didn't put a tremendous amount of ink in it uh, because this is just probably for demonstration purposes because I already have a full uh, converter full of the other ink. But to give it a little bit of difference, I put in some Waterman Myster Mysterious Blue ink so I can have it uh, with a little bit of contrast between the ink that I had just used. So let's go ahead and take that off. Let's go ahead and replace that. And let's go ahead and screw that in place. And just like that, I now have a vintage, uh, vintage Esterbrook nib, a vintage broad nib. Uh, well, it's nice renew point. So let's go ahead and see how this writes. Esterbrook vintage renew point. And I tend to like the broad. You can definitely tell this is a stiffer nib. Um, it's not quite as smooth as that Yovo nib. And it never really was meant to be either. Uh, but um, when I write with them, I've learned over the years. Because I've, I've tried fine, I've tried the extra fine, I've tried the mediums. And I just tend to like the broad in the way they go a little bit better. They tend to be a little smoother. They tend to write a, ni a little nicer and a little wetter. So now I can choose whether I want to use any of my nibs. Like I said, I got a drawer full of Esterbrook nibs. And um, out of those, I get to swap it out at will, whether I want to use fine, medium, extra fine. I got a bunch, a bunch of options available to me. And I, Waterman, Mysterious, blue which is actually like a blue black you can see by that it's actually kind of a black blue or a blue black and when it writes very very wet it tends to be extremely dark when you go to use it so there you go the Esterbrook Esty the oversized uh, simple elegant quality writer was it worth the $200 yeah you know it it depends on how you look at it. This by itself here, um, I would say, should be at the price point with which you would find the standard. And the standard, uh, I don't know. Um, you know it, it's decent quality. That's the downside to it, though. You're going to pay the money for it just to find out. Um, I do like Esterbrook. I like the history behind Esterbrook, and I was really hoping the modern incarnation would be every bit that I was used to and would be the quality that I would come to expect. And I was not disappointed with the quality whatsoever. I really do think for the $200 price tag, however, um, now this obviously is the nib in the section that came with it. It ought to include that vintage uh, adapter so that you can enjoy the vintage nibs just like I did here at that price point. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, but was I disappointed? No, absolutely not. Uh, in terms of its quality, of its construction, and the way that it writes, it's actually a very good, very pleasant quality writing experience that you're going to get with the Esterbrook SD.